أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. We seek the protection of God from Shaitan who has been expelled from God's kingdom of special mercy. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We humbly turn to God and ask for His special grace and guidance because He is the All Perfect One, the All Merciful One, and one whose special grace and mercy is available in abundance and eternally to the good doers and the believers. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyidina wa Nabiyina Muhammad wa alihi tahirin. We send our salutations and greetings on the Holy Prophet and on his holy progeny who are the best guides for mankind till the end of time. Scholars, elders, brothers, sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. We all come from God and we shall all return back to him. Even the Prophet has been addressed, إِنَّكَ مَيِّتْ وَإِنَّهُمْ مَيِّتُونَ O Prophet, you will also die one day, and all of them shall die one day. وَكُلُّ مَنْ عَلَيْهَا فَانْ وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ Anything and everything that exists on this planet Earth, indeed in the rest of the universe, shall one day come to an end. If there is one entity who is ever living, everlasting, eternal, it is God the Exalted, the one whose face is honorable, whose essence is powerful and magnificent. We assemble tonight to once again commemorate the sad and the tragic demise the loss that we have experienced in the form of the departure of Ayatollah al-Uthma Haj Shaykh Muhammad Taqi Bahjat. It's amazing this man lived almost a century, 96 years. And during this lifetime, indeed, he was, as the riwayat say, a true alim is like the star or no beyond the star it's like a brilliant sun that shines and illuminates and guides no one who came to know about him or who saw him failed to be attracted by him what is remarkable and what is amazing is that even other ulama acknowledged appreciated and affirmed his status so, for example, we have several ulama testifying to his great status. For example, Marhum Ayatollah Bahauddin, he's reported uh, he was a great mystic himself, a contemporary of Marhum Imam Khomeini. He says, one of the richest men on the earth is Ayatollah Bahjat. Richest, obviously not in, in physical terms, but spiritually. Allama Taba Taba'i. He says, if you want to see a true Abdun Salih, that is Ayatollah Bahjat. Ayatollah Jawadi Amuli. He says, we would often go and ask from Allama Taba Taba'i, please show us a person, please teach us Darsi Akhlaq. And he would say, no, that's akhlaq is not something theory, it's practical. You want a practical teacher? Ayatollah Bahjat. Just looking at him, just observing him, just being with him is enough to inspire a person. The riwayah says, Ziyaratul ulama ahabbu ilallah min sab'eena tawafan hawla al-bayt. To visit an alim, a true alim, is better and more uplifting and more spiritually invigorating than to make 70 circumambulations tawaf around the house of God. And one of the best examples of this ulama who could give you this effect was Ayatollah Bahjat. Just looking at him, this is Shaykh Muhammad Taqi Ja'far, he says, just looking at him, just meeting him, it was mawidah, it was akhlaq for us inspiration every time I went to see him 
several days after visiting him and meeting him, I would be a changed person. The charisma this man enjoyed. Mahmoud Imam Khomeini, the Khubragan, the council of experts who are all mujtahids. They went and sought advice from him. Please, we would also like uh, occasional guidance of akhlaq. Please introduce someone. He says, go and visit and go and see and go and take dars from Ayatollah Bahjad. But he's not willing to give us dars. No, you try to convince him to give you the dars of uh, akhlaq. I'm not going to uh, talk about Ayatollah Bahjad's position as far as fiqh and usul is concerned, that was established. The Khubragan came and certified and verified and acknowledged that he is a competent mujtahid and he was a marja. But I would like to share with you and remind ourselves that this man's spiritual status, what was the secret and what enabled him to reach that position? You will be amazed. He was often asked, please give us guidance. And uh, his response, if you listen to it, is very simple. He says, for example, you want to reach the higher stages of qurb ilallah and spiritual perfection. Make sure you pray salah. Khalas. Salah awwal waqt, of course. Amazing, simple piece of advice. Lakini, it means that this individual is so connected to God, come the time of salah, nothing is more important than God. Rijalun la tulhihim tijaratun wa la bay'un an dhikrillahi wa iqami salati wa ita'i zakat yakhafuna yawman tataqallabu fihi al this is Surah Nur, chapter 24, ayah number 37. That there are some people who will not be distracted from remembrance of God and from establishing prayer. Even if they are engaged in bay'ah and tijara, even if it's just a one, uh, uh, one incident of selling and buying, or no, it's their profession. Whether, whatever is their profession, whatever is that task at hand, it will not stop them and prevent them from establishing communication with their Lord. We want to learn akhlaq from you. Please show us the way. He says, why don't you come for salah in the masjid? Why don't you come for the majlis of Imam Hussein alayhi salam? You will get barakat. You ask anyone and everyone who has visited Qom, who has gone to the mosque, who has attended that majlis, and see the change and the effect that comes to them. Basics. Ah, oh, I don't wake up for Salatul Subh. Salatul Subh becomes Qadha. Advise me, what should I do? Simple advice. Please pray awwal waqt for other Salawat. Allah will give you the strength to wake up for Salatul Subh. Simple. If you have the discipline and the self control that whenever the time for Salah comes, you forget everything else and you attend to Allah. Automatically, your mind and your heart now begins to think of God as a priority. At that moment, even once you practice once, twice, thrice, several times, it becomes part of your life. Then you become uneasy, you become irritated, you become uncomfortable when it is namaz time and you're forced to do something else. Indeed, we have heard stories from the ulama. Oh, forget the ulama. The ulama, we know them. Ordinary people like you and me, when they adopt this particular practice, Salat awwal waqt, we have heard stories, people who are sick and they go into coma or unconsciousness. Come the time of Salah and they're up. They want to make wudu or they want facilities for wudu and they want to pray Salah. It's now inbuilt, it's automatic. Their inner soul, physically their mind is not in the dunya, but their inner soul is with Allah. Is with Imam Hussein, Ya Ali, Ya Hussein. And those who attended his salah, his salah, if you look at the outside of the salah, it was just the ordinary salah you can get anywhere else in the in the Qunut, his Qunuts were famous. The dua of Faraj he would recite. La ilaha illallah al Halim al Karim, La ilaha illallah al Ali al Azim, Subhanallah Rabbi Samawat al Sabah. 
sajda, in the last sajda that he would go. Nothing extraordinary. Same ordinary du'as. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad. Wa fa'al bina ma anta ahlu, wa la taf'al bina ma nahnu ahlu, ya ahla taqwa wal maghfira, ya arham rahimin The outside of the salah was the same. Obviously, inside, in his mind and in his spirit, he was close to God. The other remarkable thing that I have noted in uh, his life, question, the man managed to live 96 years. What is the secret of his health? We rarely heard he was sick and not attending the masjid and not coming for prayers. Riwayat, his standard response, we want guidance, Quran, Nahjul Balagha, Riwayat of the Ahlul Bayt. Ah, oh, we want to become just like Salman and Abu Dhar, who were very close companions of the Prophet and the Imams alayhim salam. Show us, show us the method. His answer, the Prophet and the Imams, whatever they taught Salman and Abu Dhar and the others is contained in the Quran and in the Nahjul Balagha. There's nothing more than that. The difference is in the receptivity of the companion. It's the same Quran and the same Nahjul Balagha. The difference is who is keen to listen, to think, to understand, to enact, to be committed to act upon it. He says otherwise, otherwise, even if you are with the Prophet, but if you are like Abu Jahl, it's useless. Abu Jahl saw the Prophet, lived with the Prophet, saw the charisma of the Prophet, heard what the Prophet spoke, but he was not ready to listen. The guidance is there. Question is, where is the seeking, curious, receptive mind and heart? Where is the commitment, the devotion, the strength of the willpower to do whatever you know is sahih according to the Sharia and according to the Quran? So, he says, a diet of dates, milk, yogurt, yogurt and, and olive, that's enough to keep you healthy. Um, he says, it has been tested and it has been established. He doesn't, he doesn't say by whom, most probably by himself. It has been tested and established that for a person who fasts some, and then he makes iftar. Iftar on just bread and tea. The pleasure he gets from bread and tea is as good. No, it is better than the tayyibat that everybody else has. Simple, simplicity. These are guidance which we have in our riwayat. Most of the time our problems are caused because our diets are not good. Our food and drinks. And that's why we find the Prophet used to exercise, used to exercise self-control and fasting. One of the constant food which the Prophet ate was fasting. <laughs> Amazing. Diet control as a means of health. Oh, we are, I'm suffering from diabetes. What advice do you give me? He says, go for a walk. Exercise. And, and one of the best times for exercise, between Tulu al Fajr and Tulu al Shams. The fresh air that comes at that time is one of the best. Can I show you a book which has all the different types of dua for every occasion of dua? Read it and you'll get the answers. Yes, please guide us. Quran. The amazing thing about Ayatollah Bahjat was, if I can summarize in one word, he was a man who practiced the simple slogan, back to the basics. The basics of the Qur'an, of the Hadith, of the Nahjul Balagha, the Mustahabbat. This was a living example of a man who followed the Sharia to the maximum. And Allah elevated him to the closest. Nahjul Balagha, for example, he says, it is a shame on us 
George Jordak is a Christian, an Arab Christian, Lebanese Christian. He says, I was so much attracted by Nahjul Balagha that I've read it many times, 200 times. Question, me and you, we are Shia. How many times have we even opened Nahjul Balagha? Back to the basics. My child is disrespectful. We have problems between husband and wife. But now, he's Ayatollah al Uzma. You would expect some remarkable solution to be presented. No, basic, basic solutions. Pray salah, two rak'ah, four rak'ah in every salah, in every rak'ah after Fatiha. For example, in, in one ayah, ten times you recite this ayah. In the second uh, rak'ah after hamd, ten times another ayah. In the third one, ten times a third ayah. In the fourth one, ten times another ayah. Four different ayat. I check those ayat. All those ayat are from the Quran which talk about a family. رَبَّنَا هَبْ لَنَا مِنْ ذُرِّيَّاتِنَا وَأَزْمِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنٍ لَنَا وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا Amazing, simple solution straight from the Quran. Magic. If somebody is afflicted by evil eye, somebody is influenced by magic, how should you remove the spell? So is he going to give you some abracadabra magic solution to this problem? No. This was not how Ayatollah Bahjid operated. Simple basics. Look at his answer. Carry a small Quran with you. Number one. Number two. Recite Quran 50 verses every day loudly. Loudly meaning not in whispers, but a moderate voice. Number three. Recite the two qul. Qul a'udhu bi rabbil nas. Qul a'udhu bi rabbil falak. Number four. Ayat al-Kursi. Number five. Before you go to sleep, recite the four qul. And number six, when the time for Adhan comes, recite the Adhan yourself also loudly. All based on riwayat. But the problem with us is we have forgotten the basics. قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ You tell a person that if you are afraid that you have been affected by magic or you want protection from evil magic, tell me, is there, the riwayat says, the Prophet ﷺ would recite this for his grandsons, Hassanain alayhi salam. Tell me, is there a grandfather more loving than the Holy Prophet? Are their grandsons more beloved than Hassanain alayhi salam? Is there a protection better than the Quran? Well, the Prophet used to recite, Qul a'udhu bi rabbin nas and Qul a'udhu bi rabbil falah. Which other miracle can I give you other than what the riwayat have told us? Somebody says if we are suffering an illness and that illness is difficult to cure please advise us what should we do again simple solutions basics take some turba of imam hussein alayhi salam mix it with zamzam and have a few drops till you get shifa number two give sadaqa sadaqa if you can't give too much even the little that you have but give it to multiple faqir and needy give it multiple times Number three, whoever comes to visit the sick should recite Fatiha once, twice, as many times, up to 70 times. Number four, the sick person himself should make a dua. Allahumma, Allahumma, Allahumma shfini bi shifaika, wa dawini bi dawaika, wa aafini min balaika, fa inni abduka wa abnu abdik, bi hurmatil imam al kazim. These are du'as most probably he has designed himself. But basic du'as, basic du'as. Number five, if you can take this person for ziyara. If you can't, then from a distance let him uh, make ziyara and therefore tawassul. Number six, recite hadith kisa repetitively. Number seven, sacrifice an animal, a sheep, and give it away in sadaqah. Number eight, do the, do the a'mal of shab qadr which is keeping the Qur'an on the head and making the tawassul of the A'imma alayhi salam. Basics. So, he was asked, what is your daily routine? For example, when you leave home, 
What is the dua? Because many a times people will go and stand right at the door of his house because they want to see him and talk to him. And he would come out and he is busy in dhikr. So they say, what dhikr do you make when you leave your home? Basics, the ones which are there in the riwayat. Allahumma in, inni as'aluka khayra umuri kullaha wa a'udhu bika min khizy dunya wa azab al akhira Oh Allah, I'm moving out to go to engage in the tasks that you have uh, asked me to perform. Please, this is istikhara, istikhara, give me the best, give me the khair. In today's affairs, I will do my best, but you bless me and protect me from disgrace in the dunya and punishment in the akhir. Basic, the attitude is set. The individual will do his best to do good and avoid evil. And then, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٌ قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ Basics, but very important, very important. We need to develop this. Uh, we, sometimes we listen to Masaib of Imam السلام, or we pray dua, or we pray salah, but we don't feel, we don't feel any khushu, or we don't, our eyes don't tear. What should we do? So Agha says, basic, basics, develop the khawf of Allah, develop the shawq towards Allah, and develop huzn whenever you hear the masaib of the awliya Allah. If we have lost a certain item, what should we do? You know, you would have expected him to tell you some magic formula. But it's just the basics, he tells us. Asbahtu fi amanillah wa amsaytu fi jawarillah. Keep on repeating it till you find it. And he practically says, we know people who have recited this and they've, they, they, somebody was lost, uh, but they didn't know all the details and they kept on repeating this dua. And that person finally came to them back. Simple dua. Allahumma inni as'aluka ya mudhakkir al-khayri, if you forget something. Ya Mudhakkir al Khairi, wa fa'ilahu, wal amira bih, an tu salliya ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad, wa an tu dhakkirani ma ansani, his shaytanu. Basics, oh Allah, you are the one who, who does good, who instructs to do good, who reminds people to do good. Send salawat and mercy on Muhammad and ali Muhammad, and remind me of what I've forgotten. Because the devil has affected me and made me forget. Ah, oh, we want to develop irfan. We want to become close to God. Show us the way. No elaborate, difficult method. Simple, simple advice. Learn what the Sharia has told you. To act on what the what you know about the Sharia. Bas. If you act on this advice it's enough so on another occasion he was asked please give us advice and Allah says avoid avoid committing sins that's the most important thing in your thinking in your character in your practical life avoid committing sins so now <laughs> people said yeah, but we uh, we already know this. Give us something new. Give us something different. We, we, we want to get really close to God. So Allah puts his head down. And he says, but how many, how many of you are really acting on this advice? You, can I tell you what you have been doing yesterday? So this man said, now, what have I been doing yesterday which is wrong? Yes, please tell me. So Allah tells him, yesterday you did this, and you did this, and you did this. Oh, also, oh yeah, yeah, that was wrong, it was sinful. Simple things like looking at someone in a contemptuous way. It is sinful if you are trying to disregard him. Simple thing like smiling at someone who has done something wrong. You are approving it. You thought you were not committing a sin. You thought I don't need any other advice. I'm already good. Really? Ah, tell us one dhikr. If we recite that dhikr, we get close to God. 
you know, I would say the best dhikr is the dhikr which will make you avoid sins. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar is a dhikr on the tongue. But what is more important is when the time to commit sin comes, you stop. That is the best of the dhikr, you would say. And finally, one other advice that he gives, give me a practical step to be able to reach the highest spiritual station. So he would quote this hadith from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Ala ukhbirukum bida'ikum wa dawa'ikum. Should I tell you what is your biggest problem and sickness, spiritual? And therefore should I tell you what is the remedy and the cure for that malady and illness? Dawa'ukum al-dhunub wa dawa'ukum al-istighfar. Your sickness and your illness is your sinfulness. And the solution to your sinfulness is istighfar. And then he would say you sincerely turn to God. Seriously, earnestly ask for forgiveness and act on all the conditions required for true forgiveness and definitely Allah will raise your station. Let's pray to Allah. As one of the ulama has said, Allah sends his ni'mah and his blessings to the world. The Shia community was blessed with this man once in a century maybe. We may get a person who reaches such a high stage, both in being a faqih and also in being such a great person spiritually. He was a great ni'mah this century was blessed with. He left behind a legacy for us. The guidance is very clear. Let's pray to Allah. Allah raises his station. And the loss that we suffer, Allah gives us the inspiration to be able to follow his guidance, his reminders, and his practical example. And we send our condolences, of course, to the Shia world, to the Muslim world, to humanity in general. The ulama are those who are truly near God, therefore they feel compassion for the whole of humanity. And their loss is a loss for humanity. Human beings have the power, the potential to be able to reach such high levels. The madrasa and the school of the Ahlul Bayt shows one of the best ways to do that. And we've lost one of the best students of the school of the Ahlul Bayt. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Islam in Focus is brought to you by Gala Travels. For all your travel needs, call Gala Travels at 416-491-5314 or visit galatravels.com. Islam in Focus is brought to you by PortServe International Limited, providing cargo handling services internationally. Please visit portserve.com. Islam in Focus is brought to you by Five Ways Financial. Free consultation at no obligation. Visit fiveways.com. Islam in Focus is brought to you by Fortune Metals Inc. A top choice in scrap metal trading. Visit fortunemetals.com.
احب الى الله من سبعين طوافا حول البيت to visit an alim a true alim is better and more uplifting and more spiritually invigorating than to make 70 circumambulations tawaf around the house of God. And one of the best examples of this ulama who could give you this effect was Ayatollah Bahjat. Just looking at him, this is Shaykh Muhammad Taqi Ja'far, he says, just looking at him, just meeting him, it was mu'idha, it was akhlaq for us, inspiration. Every time I went to see him, several days after visiting him and meeting him, I would be a changed person. The charisma this man enjoyed. Marhum Imam Khomeini, the Khubragan, the council of experts who are all mujtahids. They went and sought advice from him. Please, we would also like uh, occasional guidance of akhlaq. Please introduce someone. He says, go and visit and go and see, and go and take dars from Ayatollah Bahjad. But he's not willing to give us dars. No, you try to convince him to give you the dars of uh, akhlaq. I'm not going to uh, talk about Ayatollah Bahjad's position as far as fiqh and usul is concerned. That was established. The Khubragan came and certified and verified and acknowledged that he is... <laughs> لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم We seek the protection of God from shaitan who has been expelled from God's kingdom of special mercy بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم We humbly turn to God and ask for his special grace and guidance because he is the all perfect one, the all merciful one, and one whose special grace and mercy is available in abundance and eternally to the good doers and the believers. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyidina wa Nabiyina Muhammad wa alihi tahirin. We send our salutations and greetings on the Holy Prophet and on his holy progeny who are the best guides for mankind till the end of time. Scholars, elders, brothers, sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. We all come from God and we shall all return back to him. A competent mujtahid and he was a marja. But I would like to share with you and remind ourselves that this man's spiritual status, what was the secret and what enabled him to reach that position? You will be amazed. He was often asked, please give us guidance. And his response, if you listen to it, is very simple. He says, for example, you want to reach the higher stages of qurb ilallah and spiritual perfection, make sure you pray salah. Khalas. Salah awwale waqt, of course. Amazing. Simple piece of advice. Lakini, it means that this individual is so connected to God, come the time of salah, nothing is more important than God. Rijalun. لا تلهيهم تجارة ولا بيع عن ذكر الله وإقام الصلاة وإيتاء الزكاة يخافون يوما تتقلب فيه القلوب والأبصار. This is Surah Nur, chapter 24, ayah number 37. That there are some people who will not be distracted from remembrance of God and from establishing prayer, even if they are engaged in بيع and تجارة, even if it's just even the Prophet has been addressed, إِنَّكَ مَيِّتْ وَإِنَّهُمْ مَيِّتُونَ O Prophet, you will also die one day, and all of them shall die one day. وَكُلُّ مَنْ عَلَيْهَا فَانْ وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ Anything and everything that exists on this planet Earth, indeed in the rest of the universe, 
shall one day come to an end. If there is one entity who is ever living, everlasting, eternal, it is God the Exalted, the one whose face is honorable, whose essence is powerful and magnificent. We assemble tonight to once again commemorate the sad and the tragic demise, the loss that we have experienced in the form of the departure of Ayatollah al Uthma Haj Shaykh Muhammad Taqi Bahjat. It's amazing this man lived almost a century, 96 years. And during this lifetime, indeed, he was, as the riwayat say, a true alim is like the star, or no, beyond the star, it's like a brilliant sun that shines and illuminates and guides. No one who came to know about him or who saw him failed to be attracted by him. What is remarkable and what is amazing is that even other ulama, acknowledged, appreciated, and affirmed his status. So for example, we have several ulama testifying to his great status. For example, Marhum Ayatollah Baha'uddin, he's reported uh, he was a great mystic himself, a contemporary of Marhum Imam Khomeini. He says, one of the richest men on the earth is Ayatollah Bahjat. The richest, obviously not in, in physical terms, but spiritually. Allama Taba Tabai. He says, if you want to see a true Abdun Salih, that is Ayatollah Bahjat. Ayatollah Jawadi Amuli. He says, we would often go and ask from Allama Taba Tabai, please show us a person. Please uh, teach us dars e akhlaq And he would say, no, dars e akhlaq is not something theory, it's practical. You want a practical teacher? Ayatullah Bahjat. Just looking at him, just observing him, just being with him is enough to inspire a person. The riwayah says, Ziyaratul ulama 